morning, Greater El Bethel. Good morning, family and friends. This is the day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. For I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Listen, I don't know about you. I get it. I understand. It has been cold this week. Amen. It has been cold this week. But the fire that has kept on burning in my soul when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all of the great things that he's done for me. Listen, I can't help but to rejoice and praise the Lord. So we count it all joy, another opportunity to be in this place one more time. Amen. Listen, let us pray. Now, God, how we thank you for another chance to be in your house. God, we thank you for how you've kept us all week long. God, how you allowed your hedge of protection to be around us, God, by, but by us not being consumed by the elements, by us not being consumed by our situations and our circumstances. God, we thank you for you look beyond all of our faults and supplied us with all of our needs. Now, God, how we stop and ask that you would forgive us for all of our unforgiven sins. God, that you would clean us up as you see fit. God, that we can be receptive to your word, that we can be on one accord. God, that we can uplift and magnify your name right now in the name of Jesus. Now, God, bless those that are here, those that may be watching online, those that may be on their way. God, we invite your spirit to fall fresh upon each and every one of us. Now, God, have thine own way like only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Listen, we are going to keep climbing and keep going higher. We are uh, now in the hands of this dynamic trio. Amen. Who have been blessing us and taking us and uh, we just look to go even higher. Amen. I love this song, Dr. Ray, because I find myself sometimes week by week, I need encouragement. We all do. So the song says, I'm encouraged to walk with Jesus. I'm encouraged this morning.
Amen. Just to see what the end will be, I will run home. Listen, I don't know about you. I know this race gets a little hard to run. I know it gets a little difficult sometimes, but sometimes we got to keep on pushing, keep on striving, keep on going just to see what the end is going to be. Listen, we don't know the outcome. We don't know what God has in store for us, but somewhere in our hearts, in our minds, we have to run on just to see what the end is going to be. And I promise you, I promise you, it's not what you think it is, Lord have mercy. It's not what you believe it is. It's because God is in full control. And when you trust him, when you trust him, you can run on and see what the end's going to be. Amen. Amen. Listen, just uh, a few announcements that we have uh, this morning. We're going to, uh, let's do this. No, let's not do that. All right. Uh, just a few announcements that we have this morning. Uh, we are, as always, we continue to pray for all of our known sick and shut in. We pray for uh, everyone that God continues to touch, heal, and bless right now. We, uh, as always, pray for our pastor, Dr. McNeely, uh, that God moves in a mighty way. We also uh, pray for Sister Bridget McNeely. Uh, she was involved in an accident on this week, but thanks be unto God that she is good. Amen. And she is doing well. And she's at home, didn't have to go nowhere but just the hassle, you know, of having an accident is not a good experience. So we are praying for her as well. Uh, Bible study, Bible study. We are uh, having a good time. I don't know about y'all. A good time in Bible study, and we encourage you to tune in on Wednesdays, uh, either through our website or Facebook Live. Listen, we are having a good time in our curriculum. And it is my sincere prayer that it is blessing you, because uh, I know that it is blessing me. Amen. Uh, we are now in February. February. Amen. Are there any February birthdays? It had it went up quick back then. Amen. We got a few birthdays that are celebrating this month. Amen. Amen. Uh, there are a few more who are not here. Uh, my mama, amen. My mama celebrated her birthday on February 2nd. Don't worry, mama. I'm not going to tell them how old you are. Amen. Amen. Uh, Daryl's birthday is this month. Amen. We're praying. and Listen, everybody that is celebrating a birthday this month, listen, we thank God that he has afforded you another chance, another opportunity to see a brand new year. Amen. Amen. We celebrate with you just the same. Are there any anniversaries? I know this is February, the love month. Any anniversaries in, in, in the month of February? No. No. Oh. Bro, I just should have raised your hand real fast. You're going to get in trouble over there. <laughs> Amen. Well, listen, happy anniversary to uh, Deacon and Sister High. Amen. We just celebrated an anniversary on this, uh, this month. Uh, amen. Uh, let's see. This month is also February, a new month. We have told y'all last Sunday we're going to kick off this month with uh, our annual celebration of our fourth Sunday, Family and Friends Sunday. So I hope that you are gearing up and you've already started sending your invites out to your family and friends to come and fellowship and worship with us on the fourth Sunday of this one. So we uh, encourage you to do that. Uh, one final, listen, there is a young man who has been uh, fighting some challenges, amen. And he's been diligently fighting these challenges and he has overcome all of his challenges that he has had to face. And this young man is my oldest son, our oldest son, uh, Sean. Listen, Sean has overcome all of his challenges and he has made it back to the track, amen. 
Amen. We just made it back to the track. Yesterday, uh, he hit the track and he hit it back in his usual form. Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, there's a couple of races, a couple of races that he was in. One that they broke the school record. Amen. Amen. And then the other two, I believe, he qualified for nationals already. Listen. Amen. Amen. So we bless the Lord and thank God for covering him and allowing him to continue to strive to do what he uh, really loves doing, which is being on that track. So we celebrate with him. Amen. All right. I don't believe we have any other announcements at this time. Uh, so with that, we're going to turn it back over to our praise and worship, and we're going to let them take us even higher. Amen. Yeah. 
belongs to you. Called us to be stagnant 
to be stymied or stent in our relationship with God. This God of ours is always calling us or causing us to move forward. The God with whom we serve is never satisfied with us just being satisfied. But God is always calling us and causing us to move to places that we may not be able to understand right now and to do things that are seemingly beyond our ability to accomplish. That, that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And so, this God of ours is always pulling us, stretching us, moving us to places and moments to experiences that we would have never began to imagine were we the ones to in, that were in complete control of our lives. The God that uh, we serve is always up to something. The God that we serve is always doing something. The God that we serve wants, expects us to be people who are willing to follow and do his commands and that we move whenever God says move. That we are willing to press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling which is in Christ Jesus that all of us should be able to move as God tells us to move and to do as God tells us to do and to go as God tells us to go. Only problem is, only problem is because we are so inclined to do things our own way and have things our own way, we retard the progress and productivity that God uh, that can actually be our reality that God is trying to give us. Why? Because we are stuck, stymied, snatched, and stagnant and think that we know better than God. Listen, listen, oftentimes when we hear or see what somebody else's plan is or what they're trying to do or trying to carry out, we find ourselves, watch this, criticizing that person or trying to talk them out of the very thing that God may have told them to do. And that right there is a clear picture of God's vision versus our carnal sight. So we have got to stop telling people what they can't do. Let's be real. We got to stop telling people what they can't do, what's not going to work, what's not going to happen. Why? Because you don't know what vision God has given that person. And so as a consequence, every now and then, God gives us a reality check to, to let us know and remember that God is the superior and that we are the subordinates. That God is in complete control and it is simply our responsibility to say yes, Lord. Now see, right there. There, there should have been a few amens right there. Because all of us who understands the relationship with God or has a relationship with God understand that if God is in control, we don't have options as to whether or not to do or, or whether or not we don't do what God says do. If we choose an option of disobeying God, we retard again our progress and Jesus wants to know what's really going on with you. Have I not done enough for you already for you to simply say, yes, Lord, have I not made a way for you so many times for you to simply say, yes, Lord? And right there is the question for us today. For those of us who have gotten satisfied with where we are and have gotten comfortable with what we have become, listen, God is still calling us, causing us to move forward and to go farther. As a matter of fact, the call of God today is, can you keep on moving when you don't see exactly where you're going? 
Can, can, can you do that? Can you keep on moving when you don't know exactly where God is trying to lead you? May I suggest to us today that every now and then the Lord has a vision for our lives that is different from the vision that you have for your own. And, and although we get satisfied, although we get comfortable, the Lord is saying that I'm not done with you yet. And I'm pulling you, I'm pressing you, I'm pushing you to a place that is not a place for you to occupy where you are right now. Listen, listen, let, 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 let me just wrestle with that one just for a few seconds. Because I want somebody to understand, even you, my brothers and sisters, are not yet at a place, at the place where the Lord wants you to be. Let that sink in for a minute. Let that sink in. Yeah, 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 yes. With all of your Christian experience, even though you've been a member for GEB for 69 and a half years, all right, even out. though you've been saved and sanctified for 57 and three quarter years, God is not done with you yet. As long as you have breath in your body, God is calling you, causing you to move forward, to make progress, to keep on keeping on. Yes. And, and is there anybody that understands that God is always calling us and pushing us to another level? God is calling us to a greater experience. He says to those disciples that were around him that, 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 that he was on their way. Uh, they were gathered there the, by the lake of Genesera. Now listen. It says, I want you to launch out to the deep and let your nets down for a big catch. And, and I want to show you that I'm able to do far more than you've ever seen in your entire life. I want to prove to you that there is nothing too hard for God. I want to show you that if you trust me, I want to open your eyes to new experiences and new possibilities. I want to show you what eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, and it hasn't even entered into the hearts of men and women the good things that God has in store for those who love him. So now, so now as we approach Mark chapter 8, it, it, it seems if you take the time, if you read the story, we'll walk through it a little bit, uh, chapter 8 in its entirety. But it, it, it seems to me that the Lord is trying to discipline his disciples here to understand destiny. Let, let, let me give it to you one more time. He's trying to discipline his disciples to understand destiny. Listen, he says, I'm not done with your development, men. I still got something I want to do for you. These men have been out there with the Lord Jesus for some time now, and they've been in ministry with him for the last three days. And when you read the first part of chapter 8, you will find out that Jesus is coming to the end of a three-day ministry that he had going on. He was had a three-day revival, and after the revival service, he is saying to his disciples, listen, I can't just send this crowd away. He says, because I have compassion on them. They have been out here with me all this time. They've been out here with me all this time. Before they leave, he says, I need to feed them. Now, now, now you've got to understand that Jesus is the it is the is the epitome. He's the he, he's the true churchman, if you will. He's the quintessential clergy person. He understands that after you have church. Watch this. There's only one thing left to do. You, you, you must understand that after you are had a, if you are a good church person, you understand that we greet, we meet, and then we eat. Amen. Listen, Brooklyn, you already there. You already there. Is there anybody in church that understands when you leave here this afternoon, the first thing that you're going to do is make your way to some space where you can sit down and break bread. There has been many of occasions, listen, there's been many of occasions that, that I've gone to different churches. I'm even right here at GEB. And, and there's some service that you can, you can smell them preparing the food in the kitchen. 
Y'all remember back then, y'all sitting up here having a good service and fish fries would be going on downstairs and, and, and other cooking and the smells would be coming up and it'll have you saying, go oh, preacher, hug it off. <laughs> trying to get downstairs. Trying to get to the back room, wherever the food is. And if you pay attention to what's happening here, Jesus has compassion and he says, I got to give these people some food. Since I can't just let them leave. So, so Jesus begins to make an inquiry of the disciples. He says, how much food do you have? As a matter of fact, the disciples were saying, Jesus, listen, we, we, we don't have enough food to feed all of these people. And, and according to the text, there was about 4,000 people out there. And Jesus said, what y'all got? How much you got? What, what, what do you have? And Jesus, and, and they're looking at Jesus saying, listen, we don't have enough food to feed these folks. We out here in a remote wilderness location. So how about this? How about you just send the people on their way and they'll find something on their way home? Jesus looking at them and saying, oh, no, nah, hold on, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. That, that, that's not how I operate. Y'all must have forgot who I was. He said, I have compassion on them, and I don't want to just give them spiritual food. I'm concerned about everybody's situations. I want to give them some natural food as well. So he says, I want to feed them. He says, how much food do you have? And the disciple says, well, we got about seven loaves of bread in our hands. Now wait, they, 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 they say we got seven loaves of bread in our hand. Now, now let's not move past that too fast because uh, may I suggest this morning that sometimes the Lord calls you to help yourself to understand that the mode of your deliverance is already in your hands. Sometimes you have to think about whatever that you have going on, sometimes Whatever your mode of deliverance, it could very well already be in your possession. They had seven loaves in their hand. That's one great example. Y'all remember when the woman was trying to figure out how she was going to make it? And she had that all in her house. And guess what? She had more. It was already in her possession and she didn't even know. Sometimes what we're trying to move and get ourselves out of and you looking around for other answers and situations and ways out it's probably already in your hands sometimes what God wants us to do he wants to do it through you it's already a part of you he just wants you to see he, he's just trying to see are you willing to trust him enough to yield to him what you already have. Because if you yield to him what you already have, he can exponentially bless it and show you that, watch this, there's nothing too hard for God. So he says, how many loaves do you have? They say, we have seven. He says, make the people sit down and give them what I call, watch this. He gives them what we can call another demonstration of provision. If you take your notes, that's your first one right there. Another demonstration of provision. He, he is trying to clear up their vision of who he is and what he's able to do. So he gives them another demonstration of provision. Watch what he does. He takes the loaves, blesses them. He lifts them up to God and gives thanks for them. And he gives them to the disciples. And he tells the disciples, go and give it to all 4,000 that are sitting around. And the Bible says, when they had distributed the loaves of bread and the fish that accompanied the loaves, the Bible says now about 4,000 people have eaten. Their bellies are full. They, they, they've already eaten and they had, watch this, 12 basketfuls left over as a testimony to what God has done. Listen, I don't know about you, but every now and again when I've had to call on the name of Jesus and have him to bless me in my situation, when I've come to find out 
is whenever he blesses me, he doesn't just give me exactly what I need, although he does. What I found out is he even allows for a little overflow. You, you, you ever was trying to figure out something and all of a sudden you got it taken care of and you look back and now you realize, what well, I got a little bit extra. That's because God wants you to understand, not only will I take care of your problem, your situation, your need, guess what? I'm going to bless you if I can bless you abundantly, exceedingly, above all, whatever you can ask. So whenever the Lord does something for you that you couldn't do for yourself, whenever the Lord takes from your hand and multiplies it so it can be a blessing not only to you but to somebody else, that's reason to rejoice. So after all of that, they had 12 baskets full left over. Now, watch this. Watch this. The story goes on. And the disciples are looking at him, trying to figure out what's taking place. And they're looking at him and how he is the provider that he is. And how he took the resources that they had and he expanded them. He stretched them so that when they look back and think about what he has done in that moment, it does nothing but put on your heart that you have nothing else to say. But I know the Lord will make a way somehow. Now he's fed all of these people. Their bellies are full. And the Bible says that the fish sandwiches are left over. They have so much left over as a testimony. And then Jesus says, let's get into the boat and cross over to the other side of the water. And while they were crossing over, while they were going, the Bible says that the disciples enter into a conversation about how many loaves they had left over. Now, now they're talking about the loaves that have been left over, and, but somehow or another, they only have one loaf of bread with them on the boat. It's 12 baskets full. They only have one loaf of bread left over on the boat. Now, the, now, 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 now they're trying to figure out and, 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 and know, and now they're thinking, man, Jesus is going to be mad at us. Because we were 12 baskets full over on the seashore. And now, all of a sudden, we just got one in the boat. So some, we messed up somewhere. And Jesus says, watch this. The strangest things. It's amazing some of the stuff that Jesus comes back with. He says, beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and of Herod. Huh? Where the yeast of the Pharisees of Herod, right? When I read it too, you, you're trying to figure out what Jesus meant. What, what do you mean when you're saying this? Out of nowhere, he just starts saying, beware of the yeast of the Pharisee and of Herod. Listen, Jesus is suggesting here, you have to be real careful of the influence of those who do not have a relationship with God wreaking havoc in your life. I'm going to say it one more time. It went right over your head. Jesus is suggesting here you have to be real careful of the influence of those who do not have a relationship with God wreaking havoc in your own life. Making it seem like just because they don't believe, you ought not believe. He says, be real careful hanging out with people who don't have a confidence in me to work things out for the good. You don't allow the influence of negative people to get into your spirit because that yeast will grow. And you will be a faithless follower. And Jesus is only interested in those who have enough faith to believe that there is nothing that is too hard for God. Now, 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 church, I mentioned to you that, that, that this is another demonstration of provision. 
Why, why did I say that? Because this is not the first time that the Lord has taken some bread, taken it, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to a multitude. You do remember, now that was, this, this time is the 4,000, but you do remember when he fed the 5,000. But there was a time and a season when Jesus fed 5,000 with five loaves of bread and two fish. And if he's done it before, then you ought to know that he's able to do it again. This is just another demonstration of provision of the Lord. Listen, God deliver us from those who feel as if just because we've come to the hurdle in our lives that God is not able to allow us to get over that hurdle that we, can, that we currently face. All you need to do is take a flashback of how the Lord has already made a way, how the Lord has already opened doors, has blessed your socks off, has the Lord already done something for you. And if he's done something for you before, guess what? He can do it again. He can do it again. Is, is there anybody in here that has a testimony in their heart, in their life, that can say, when I look back over my life and I can see how God has made a way over and over again. Listen, I refuse to listen to those people that don't have a relationship with God. I refuse to listen to trying to tell me what God won't do. Because, because, because I'm already... I already understand, and I, I already have, watch this, I got too much evidence of what he's already done. And then I just need him to do it again. Listen, I, I, if, if, if there is anybody who can be charged as guilty, Brother Glee, we all have enough evidence to charge God, Jesus, the Trinity, as guilty as charged for blessing us. He's guilty as charged for healing our bodies. He's guilty as charged for making a way out of nowhere. He's guilty as charged for healing us and, and taking us to new and higher heights. I believe the song says, new heights I'm climbing. Each and every day. Why? Because I've got too much evidence to build upon God taking me where he wants me to go. Now, some of us just need to say, Lord, do it again. I need you to bless me one more time. I need you to help me out. Listen, we just closed out January. Uh, uh, we just closed it out. We just closed out a whole 2021. And some of us have trying to figure out right now, how am I going to make it through February? Listen, you've got too much evidence. You can look back over your life and say, he's already done it. And if he's done it before, Lord, just do it again. I'm talking about another demonstration of God's provision. And, and I love that word provision because it means that God looks ahead. He sees before and he already knows what we're going to need even before we need it. He goes ahead of us and supplies our every need. He doesn't say, wait, uh, uh, don't get caught up. Don't get caught up in Disbelief. That's what he's telling these disciples. Don't get caught up in disbelief. Listening to people that are influenced by people who don't have confidence in him. And, and, and oftentimes we find ourselves in that struggle. Have you ever heard somebody telling you some negative advice or, or telling you some things that ain't going to happen? You ought to stop and just evaluate their relationship with God. Do they really trust them or are they just faking and shaking? Do they really lean and depend on them or do they bow out and run at the first sign of trouble? Listen, you have to be careful of the folk that are around you when it comes to your relationship with God. And so now Jesus has to give to them what we're calling right here. Watch what he's giving them. He's giving them an examination for revelation. That, that, that's your second one right there. And, and it, he's giving them an examination for revelation. Watch the movement of the text. He moves from another demonstration of provision to an examination for revelation. Watch what he does. The Bible says that he begins to make inquiry 
of them. If, if your Bible is open or your app is still unlocked, you'll see it right there. You'll find out at the beginning of verse 17, the Lord starts to make inquiry with these disciples. He says, because he was aware of their discussions and what they were talking about, he says, why are you talking about having no bread? He says, do you still not see or understand? Are your hearts hard? And that, that, that's just a spiritual way of saying, are you slow? What's wrong with you? Do you not get it? Do, 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 do you have eyes but fail to see and ears and fail to hear and don't remember when I broke five loaves for the 5,000? How many? He asked them a question. How many basket loaves are from the pieces do, did you pick up? They said 12. It says, and I broke uh, uh, the seven loaves for the 4,000. How many basket fulls did you pick up after that one? They answered. They said seven. He said to them, you still don't understand. You still don't see it. Do you not get it? What more do I need to do for you? For me to prove who I am. How am I able to supply your needs? How much more do I need to do for you? For you to see how many more thousands do I need to feed. Before you know that I'm able to do anything. That needs to be done. How many more times do I need to give you peace in the midst of your storm? How many more times do I need to be a shelter over your head and food on your table? How many more times do I need to show you? Now I know. I know. I know that we can, we can easily come down real harsh on these disciples. Granted, they've been with them. They are witness accounts of what, what Jesus has been doing, and they've been with them, and after three years, they still didn't get it. Watch them. They, they are walking, looking at Jesus, and they still didn't get it. Well, now, let's just be honest in here on today. There are some folk, even right here at GEB, that can testify that there have been some seasons in our own lives when we just didn't quite get it. I mean, get great. You've been saved all these years and you still get nervous when something shows up in your life and you don't know if God is going to work that thing out or not. There are some moments that we still have to find ourselves wondering, God, are you going to do it? Are you going to step in on time? We find ourselves in a little shaky place even over the course of how long we've been worshiping and fellowshipping with God. But I can, can I tell you, you ought to look back at your track record. You ought to look back at the many things that God has already done for you and you still, still don't understand. But I'll be honest. I'll be honest, there are some moments where I found that the Lord had to examine me. I found myself coming up short. But I came to church today to hear this preacher hear, hear, hear the word of God to tell me to say, and you be not dismayed. Whatever the time, God will take care of you. Listen, every now and again, church, the Lord has to challenge us, doesn't he? He has to challenge us. The Lord has to chide us and ask us, just like he did those disciples, do you still not understand? Still don't get it. That I can make a way out of no way. Still don't get it that I can be a bridge over troubled waters. And watch this, watch this. I, I love the way, I love the way that the old, the old seasoned saints came up with uh, all of these sayings about God. That that that, that and, and, and some of the stuff that they would say and how they would put it, how they would articulate it, they, they would cause us sometimes to think that they were less than educated. But 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 what we find out is they had some wisdom on the inside of them that allowed them to say some things for us that we still say to this day. As a matter of fact, there are some people in here right now, you don't know where it, where, where, uh, where it came from when somebody says uh, bridge over troubled waters. You, you can't tell us, you can't tell me where that came from. But, but as you look 
over some of the trouble spots in your life. If you look at some of the obstacles and circumstances that you had to get to and go to and get over, you know that it was nobody but the Lord that brought you over. So that, that phrase makes sense when it says you'll be a bridge over troubled waters. And as a matter of fact, can I find a couple of people who, who can stop and say, listen, wherever I am right now, the good place that I might be, I can't take credit for none of it. Because if it had not been for the Lord stepping in my life in seasons that I needed him most, listen, I didn't get to where I was by myself, but thanks be unto God, he kept me. So he gives them an examination for their revelation. He wants them to have the scales fall from their eyes. He, he wants them to see clearly what as a matter of fact, there it is. There's our definition for the last couple of Sundays. He wants to give them a clearly articulated, clearly communicated word from the law, a revelation that allows them to have and understand that their will needs to line up with the God's will. And when it doesn't, you can walk therein. But watch this. When those fellows finish getting the examination, they finally pull into a place called Bethsaida. And when they get there, your Bible says that folk came from that village and bring a blind man to Jesus. Watch this, I'm almost done. And when they bring that blind man to Jesus, they ask Jesus to restore his sight. Now, now that already right there lets us know that this man has seen before. But something along his journey and his life has robbed him, stripped him of what he once had. And now they want the Lord to restore to him what he once had, which was his sight. Now, the Lord takes him a few steps away. And, and Lord have mercy. He spits on his eyes. Now, 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 if y'all paid attention... <laughs> To, to some things that have been happening here locally. Uh, Y'all saw the instance of where a preacher decided he was gonna act this out. Listen, we ain't doing that, praise the Lord, hallelujah. We, that, that, that ain't happening. And as a matter of fact, there are certain processes of, of the Lord that he did that I could actually do without. But uh, he, he spits on his eyes. But he spits on his eyes, and then when he spits on his eyes, he cleanses the man, touches him, and asks him, what do you see? Now watch this response. It says, I see people who look like trees walking around. And so the Bible says that, that the Lord lays his hand on him again, which was the verse that I read, verse number 25. He lays his hands on him again, and his sight was restored, and he began to see. What do you see now? He says, I see everything clearly as I should. Now, may I suggest that there will be some seasons where the reality of our lives is not perfection, but progression. That, 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 that's your last one right there. I submit to you that, 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 that you and I have got to learn that God has not called us to perfection, but he's called us to progression. Now, now I believe that there's a few of us who ought to be able to give testimony that you are so grateful that God has not called you to be perfect, but he has called you to make progress. Now, now that, that ought to take some weight off some folk uh, that you've been expecting to be perfect. In fact, it ought to take some weight off of you for your mindset of thinking that you got to be perfect. Because God did not call us to perfection. 
He's called us to progression. And it doesn't matter what other folks' expectations are around you. I came to remind you that the Lord does not expect for you to be perfect. There was only one person that was perfect. There was only one perfect that can one person that can do no wrong. There was only one person that can, that, that that just follow the God, his father's rules to the guideline, to the T. And none of us could ever do it. None of us could ever. But hey, what he has called us to do is to make progression. What are you talking about, preacher? The Lord laid his hands on him at first and said, what do you see? He says, I see people looking like trees walking around. Now, now we can say that this is bad. This is faulty. It's an impaired look. But if you remember where he came from, when Jesus first met him, he couldn't see anything at all. Jesus laid his hands on him and he, he, he may not have seen everything that he needs to see, but what he does see, he's making progress. Listen, is there anybody in here that can say, man, I'm so glad that you said that because now when you read my biography, you read, you coming down my road. Is there anybody that can testify that I'm not perfect, but I'm glad that the Lord laid his hands on me because I'm making progress in what God wants me to do. Now see, a lot of us can look at this and say, this is good. It's real good because now and then we ought to pause and celebrate progress. Listen, let me give it to you again. I said every now and again, we ought to be able to pause and celebrate and thank God in the middle of our life journey. Listen, we may not be where we want to be, but thank God we're not where we used to be. We might not be at the mountain top just yet, but somewhere I'm on the side of the mountain trying to get there and I'm getting there only by the grace of God. So, here it is. We ought to be able to get excited about the provisions that God has made in our lives. Listen, I don't know about you, but when I think about all of the things that God continuously does in my life, even though I may not have deserved it. I can't do nothing but wave my hand and tell God thank you for making the provisions. Listen, as a matter of fact, what I'm even more so grateful is that he made the provision that I couldn't make, that I didn't have the ability to make. As a matter of fact, some of the folk that I called on still couldn't make the provision that God made. And I and I just want to stop by this morning and remind us that sometimes how we look at things might not necessarily be how God looks at things. Listen, you, you, you ever had some situations and in your situations, you had to stop and sit down for a moment on the side of the bed and just put your hand on your face and just sit there and shake and rock because you didn't know how it was going to turn out. You ever had to sit there and then end up falling to your knees and falling to your knees and in your heart and in your mind you started saying, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. Listen, have you ever been there where the doctor has come into the room and said, listen, I don't know what to tell you, but we've done all that we can do. But somewhere in the midst of the conversation, you found out that the Lord came in and he already had made the provisions for you. Listen, I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm glad that he came in and he made provisions in my life. Because through those provisions, I found myself making progression. Listen, you ever found out that sometimes when you came out 
on the other side of your problem, you found yourself a little bit stronger. You found yourself a little bit wiser. You found yourself able to do something even a little bit better. That's because through his provision, he was allowing for progression to be made in your life. Listen, I'm glad about it that God God found favor in our lives. That just when we needed him most, just when our vision was blurred, when we Whatever it was we was going through. I'm thankful that God says, listen, I've got something for you. When you look at that, is it your final destination? What you see is it your final resting place. What you see is not your, what's going to be determined to be your life. He says, I have new things that you haven't even experienced yet. I have some things that when I finally open your eyes, but let me back up. Not when I finally open your eyes, when you finally stop and decide to let go and let go. You'll be able to walk a different walk. You'll be able to move differently. You'll be able to talk differently. You'll be able to tell somebody, I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. I'm glad that he touched me. So here it is. There was a method to the matter. That God finally revealed to me when he said, listen, I want you to talk about vision. Here's the lesson that, that he wanted me to, to have. He said, I'm not through blessing you. He says, Get caught up on what you see right now. The vision that I have laid out, some people might not understand. Some people might try to dis di distract you, might try to deter you, might try to stop you. But I want to encourage each and every one of you that whatever God says do, make sure that you do it. Don't trust your own eyes. Your own eyes will tell you this ain't happening. This ain't possible. Your own eyes will reveal to you, I remember when so-and-so tried to do that. And it'll cause you to doubt and become a faithless person. What he's saying is you have to keep your heart, mind, eyes, ears, and everything focused on him. And when you focus on him, he'll say, I will make a way for you. Even when it seems like it's not going to happen. He says, I'm going to make a way for you. And when I start to make the way, walk with me. When I start to make your path, walk with me. When I start to do things in your life, walk with me. For he won't leave us or lead us astray. The door is open. There may be somebody right now saying, listen, my vision has been clouded. 
has been blurred. I'm making progress. But I just want to get all the way to where God wants me to be. We extend this privilege to you right now. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Listen, and if you think that God can't do it, I challenge you just one time to trust in Him. Challenge you just one time to try Him. And take God at His word. This privilege is extended to you right now. And when you are able to see, when you were able to be, uh, uh, come out on the other side and he's giving you clear vision, you can easily stop and tell yourself and shout to the world and tell everybody, I know the Lord will make a way. Yeah.
on the night of Jesus' betrayal, the Lord gathered his disciples and he took them to the upper room. And there was a table that God had prepared and he was preparing a feast for them. And as he was preparing the table, he looked and he asked a question. He says, one of you will betray me. And all of the disciples began to murmur and ask the question, Lord, is it me? Lord, is it I? Finally, Judas said, Lord, is it me? And Jesus looked at him and said, whatever you must do, go and do it quickly. And afterwards, he continued to set the table and he took the bread and as he was preparing the bread, he told everyone, he said, let a man examine himself. He says, for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to his own soul, not discerning the Lord's body. And for this many are weak among you and many sleep. Amen. So we are going to examine ourselves and pray, for we know that we have all fallen short of the glory and honor of God. So as I pray, I ask that you would pray just along with me that God would forgive us for our sins. Now, God, as we pray right now, as we get ready to partake of this communion, God, we pray right now, first of all, God, that you would forgive us for all of our unforgiven sins. God, we've done some things, said some things, went some ways that you wouldn't have us to do or say. But now, God, we're thankful for your grace and your mercy and that you are a forgiving God. And right now, God, we pray that you would clean us up in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for sending your Son, for giving his life that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Thank you, God, for the saving grace and the love and compassion that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And afterwards, after he had finished giving thanks and praying, he took the bread, he took the bread and broke it. And he said, take, eat ye all of it, for this represents the body which is broken for you for the remission of sin. For as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me, and they did all he. Likewise, in the same manner, he took the cup before he had supped and blessed it. He said, Take, drink ye all of it, for this represents the blood that was shed on Calvary. For as often as you do it, do it in remembrance of me, and they did all drink together. to a mind of ours to pray. Man, we don't have a mind of ours to go to, but we do have our various homes. Amen. Amen. All right. I don't believe that there is anything else. Um, thank you all for being here on this morning. I know it's cold, and I'm looking forward to next Sunday for y'all being here also. Uh, and we're going to keep climbing. Listen, y'all continue to pray one for another as you go into this week. I'm praying for each of you uh, that God continues to allow his hand of protection and healing and covering upon you each and every day. All right, let's go stand.
as we leave this place, Father, we pray that you would keep us, watch over us, allow your edge of protection to be around us as we go through this another week. God, we pray that you would bless us like only you can. God, bless the tithes, the givers, those that gave, those that had the desire to give but had it not. Let it be used for which it is given, which is kingdom building. Now dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. Give us traveling grace. Let no hurt, harm, or danger will come upon us until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen.